So hi folks, it's Kelly Walsh and I am here to demonstrate the Mondo Pad today. Uh, the Mondo Pad is a pretty incredible device. It is a large touchscreen monitor with a built-in computer. It's running Windows in the background, but it works uh, mostly through this proprietary interface where you've got different kinds of functionality. So you can load files and annotate them, share them. The MondoPad is designed specifically to be very good at collaborating with other MondoPad users. Uh, there are possibilities for collaboration with non-MondoPad users and as well as um, some really cool ability to control devices on your network or have devices on your network control the MondoPads. cool collaboration possibilities um, and all driven around this idea of e easily being able to bring up display and annotate different kinds of content uh, files that you can load through a USB driver or you can email a file to the device there are, or you can grab a file off the internet um, going to the internet opening up web pages and being able to share and annotate and discuss and collaborate with them, uh, going specifically into a video meeting mode to work with other um, MondoPad users, and a whole variety of functionality. Uh, over here too you see that a Microsoft Office is installed on the device so an administrator can install different kinds of software and make it accessible through the device. So let's go in, I'm going to go ahead and go into view mode and open up some files. I have a USB drive in here and I can go out there and open up some of the files that are on there. So here for example are some pictures from a, a, a blues cruise I had the, the good luck to take. Uh, so uh, once they come up really easy to kind of scroll through and if I go out um, back out to uh, oh it's got it thinks I'm in the edit mode there. In fact let's go ahead and do that. Um, if I bring up the menu here and I go to annotation, you will see very easily that I can annotate this. So we've got pens and I can control the thickness of the pen or I can go into a transparency mode and I can highlight certain things that I might want to highlight. So here's these folks up here. Just, you know, a real quick look at that kind of functionality. But I'm going to go ahead and pop back out of here again. Um, and let's go take a look at the browser mode. So I'm on the web. Up comes the InFocus page. I can save favorites like uh, here we have the Emerging Ed Tech site. I can go through it very easily, scroll around, look at content. I can click on links. Um, there's also a stylus to allow you to do these types of things. And again, I can go into annotation mode and very quickly go in and say, all right, well, you know, I want to highlight this particular, oh, let's make that a lot thicker and let's make it transparent. I can go in and highlight these sections of content. Or back in the other mode, I can choose to, you know, bring attention to things. You'll see I can also um, either you know, select tools, lasso tools, eraser tools. I can come in here and you know, erase what I was doing. I can clear the whole thing out, undo, redo, put this little grid tool up that allows me to, to, to focus on certain things as I'm doing them. Um, I can print these things, save them, share them, just turn annotation back off again and come out to this regular mode to view and use the web page. So uh, really robust functionality. Coming back out here to the home page, you'll see I can also go into whiteboard mode and I can use these tools in a more direct fashion. So I want to go ahead and make these examples, um, or, you know, draw out any kind of piece that I might want to teach to and discuss. I can do that very easily. So let's take a look here, going ahead and running another application. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run here um, Word and open that up and start a blank document. One of the things that I think is really cool is this little piece here. So I can handwrite um, or I can use, uh, and it really works pretty darn good. So let's see here. This is, whoop, so I got I got confused. Oh, see, it figured it out right. This is, let's try the, um, but amazing handwriting recognition um, in a tool like this. So that's really cool. I hit insert, boom, there it goes, it's in there. Uh, so that's all you also really need as well. All right, 
right, so just to give you a little bit of a flavor of the Mini Mini idea, if you have other Mondopad users in your organization or anywhere in the world, you can easily add them in as contacts, and just with a couple taps, you can be in business um, doing a video meeting with them. So here you're seeing the display of uh, the office here, including the camera uh, that is recording this session. Um, so really easy to use. I'm using it standalone. I don't have any other Mondopad users to access at the moment, but um, you can. We, we weren't able to install another tool like Zoom, which is a meeting application that we use regularly at the College of Westchester. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into Zoom, and I can start a video session, and there I am using Zoom on the Mondopad, and I can do my collaboration with other folks using the Zoom interface. So let's think a little bit about some instructional applications of a tool like this. Here's just an example where I've Googled art history, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the uh, Khan Academy's art history page. Uh, maybe I want to see that a little bit larger, even fill up the screen just a tad more. Uh, and here we have this first things first. We come out here, they're talking about cave painting, contemporary art, and everything in between. So there is a video. I'm going to go ahead and play that. Um, at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York City. We're in the Templo Mayor Museum, the main temple of the Aztecs. We're in the Moritz House in The Hague. We've just walked up a very steep hill. In the American Museum of Natural History. In the Basilica. So I shrunk that a little bit just so I'd be able to go into annotation mode and get to the stop and go into annotation mode, clear out what I was last doing, and now I can use um, annotations here as well if I want. So I want to go ahead and draw something to you know, bring attention to it, I can do it easily enough. Uh, maybe have a little dialogue around it, clear that out, and allow this to continue playing. Oh, I want to come out of annotation mode when I do that. Yes. And the, of San Zeno. At the top of the Acropolis in Athens. Standing inside of the Rustin. So, you know, just a quick example there, but easily enough I can come back out. Maybe I'm dealing with a different topic and I want to discuss math or the Pythagorean theorem. Or maybe I want to collaborate musically with some friends somewhere else or just have a video conference with an expert that I bring in and display here on the screen. Or maybe I can bring up Excel and demonstrate how certain functions work. So here we're going to just go ahead and show the auto song function. Boom, there you go. I always like to make my sums bold and underline the uh, cell immediately above them because I think that looks nice. All right, so now check this out too. This is my iPad and I'm running the control view um, application from MondoPad. And what happens is there's a code up there in the corner of the MondoPad that it gets a new code every time. And now by putting that code in, I can connect and I'm gonna be able to control the MondoPad from my iPad here. So let's give it a second. So it comes up, it's telling me about some of the things I need to do to emulate certain functions on there. And I can go in and fire it up, view and share. And, you know, there's the pictures. I can go ahead and bring up one of those pictures on the MondoPad um, and control it and annotate it from here. So there I am using the annotation application for the pictures. So pretty neat, right? You can use your iPad or other de device to control the MondoPad. And another cool thing you can do is control another device, or a computer at least, um, from the MondoPad itself. So check this out. So now I have gone ahead and loaded the Present2 application on my computer, my Windows computer, and on it uh, I fire up the application and also put in that code up in the corner and then the model pad says, do you want to let, you want to do this, allow permission to do this, and now I'm running my computer from the model pad, so now I can go ahead and I'm going to fire up um, my recording software, and so now here you see, here's my recording software running uh, with the model pad as the interface and working in touchscreen mode. And so I can do things like move these different levers up and down pretty easily and tell the software to go ahead and play. Um, in this case, I have to turn on some speakers back here in order to be able to hear it. But uh, really cool just the fact that I can project any computer to this device. So if you're sitting in a classroom full of people, you can permission the computers to be able to display and you can then take over and show something that somebody found. If you work in a computer lab, for example, and a student brings up a good resource, you can say, all right, I want to project that onto this screen here. I want to capture and um, 
and, and cast your screen on the Mondo Pad and even control it from the Mondo Pad. So really, really neat functionality. So there you have it, the Mondo Pad. Uh, just imagine if uh, you had classrooms all over that had this kind of device in it, how easy it would be to, to, to share, to project, to annotate things as they're projecting, particularly if you have the larger screen ones too, that would be nice. Um, and then be able to collaborate and bring up somebody from the outside world or somebody right uh, within your university setting. So the one uh, challenge probably the most is that it's not inexpensive. It would be nice if uh, InFocus bought the price of this down. I imagine they do have um, deals for volume purchases. Uh, so f uh, about $5,800 on CDW for this 57-inch unit. They come in much larger units but get more expensive. Um, there are some huge uh, benefits over the smart board environment. Um, you know, having a, a glass screen instead of some of the, the surfaces on some of the smart boards that can be damaged and you're not using pens to write and erase and deal with all that. It's just touch sensitive. Um, also pretty self-contained. You don't have a separate computer to, to deal with. Uh, it's built right in here. And, and the ease of being able to collaborate with other users using the video meeting functionality is also a powerful tool. So, you know, just it, it's an option to be aware of. Um, if you're equipping a, a whole new environment with systems and trying to think about which make the most sense, or if you're an individual practitioner who just wants to be able to do some really cool things like this, it's also an option worth being aware of. And so there you have the Mondo Pad. Thank you very much.